My name is Dr. Leah Fredrickson, and I'm a science, math, and physics teacher here at the Walder School of the Peninsula. And I also sponsor our high school robotics team and help out with them. Hi, I'm Lysander. I'm a senior at the Walder School, and I'm the captain of the Wobots. Every year we compete in First Tech Challenge, of course, as you are here today. But also, we like to find a lot of time to have fun with it. Miles, this is my third year on the team. Every year, somewhere toward the beginning of the year, the um, FTC announces a competition in which there's a game. Every year the rules are different. Every year we have to build a robot that's within an 18-inch cube that fits the parameters of the game. And our goal is to make it the best for the game, the best fit, so that it will score the most. I think uh, some of the fun of FTC is that you're not building the same robot every, every year. You have to learn a completely new logic. I think that's the beauty of it, is that you learn something new every year, and I think that's more exciting. Definitely. Every year, there's some of the same elements. It's always on a 12 foot by 12 foot playing field. It's always moving something, identifying something, and it always is a two and a half minute match. But every year, teams find a new way to creatively solve the problems presented by the year's challenge, pick up the new blocks or the old blocks in a new way, You'll notice in the competition today that we will have many phases of the competition. The robotics teams all arrive at 8 a.m. and they immediately start working on their robots. Their robots should be mostly done, but there's always some last minute fixes that they need to do. You get there early and right away, you have to face the judges. And then the competition will actually kick off. There are four teams who compete at once. They are randomly paired up so that two teams are working together in an alliance and they are working against or competing with the other alliance of two teams. Between each match the teams are scrambled so that each time a team competes they're competing with and against other teams. They will compete in five matches throughout the normal competition. There's always a part that breaks, there's always a new idea that you just didn't have time to implement and there's always a new game coming up next that you need to prepare for. So if you see teams are scrambling to get their robot working and ready for the next match, that's very normal. There's a pulley on our robot that extends the arm out. And during our last competition, it broke every single match and it kept getting tangled. And we, in between the matches, we really quickly tried to fix it. And by the last one, it pretty much worked. And that was, that was nice. We were, that was fast problem solving. Okay. Matches can be exciting, especially because you never know exactly what's going to happen. There's almost no team that's robot functions perfectly. But the fact that it goes on throughout the day means teams do have a chance to continue innovating on competition day. It makes it stressful, but it makes it really fun. There's always a lot of roles in every robotics team. Team robots need to be built, designed, programmed. I joined the club in ninth grade. I learned about the club when I was in middle school and I really wanted to join it. I do a lot of engineering and working on different designs for the robot, but this year I've started to learn some of the software things because Lysander, who has been working on our coding, is leaving next year, so we need someone to fill in his spot. There's always leadership roles, there's often finance roles, so robotics teams are great of people that need a lot of different roles, kind of like a business and like a club. Everyone has a role to play. I think we all play multi roles, but we are based in our own strengths. I think the most important part of that is the fact that our team is really small. Most teams we've heard of have a lot more people. And you know, each person has a very small job. They're part of a very big picture that they don't have very much of a say in. And I think that's what makes us different. And there's a lot that goes into a team. We have to have a team leader who instructs us and records the progress that we're making. We have to figure out how to build the robot. We have to figure out how we can score points. We have to test drive and all that stuff. But I think just on this fact that our team is so small, it gives so many exciting opportunities to learn different things is I think that's almost more of an advantage than having more people on a team. If we do our share of debating on will this work, oh, yeah. this mechanism work in mm -hmm. one way or this other way, which one is better, it usually ends up that we both go and build it and disprove each other, whichever one works the best we yeah. decide on. I'd say an important skill that I think every robotics team works to cultivate is that every member is able to contribute. Everyone has the initiative to contribute. So I'm really proud of how productive our team is able to be. It's not a team that requires a lot of micromanaging. 
I'd say our team is creative both in how we approach the robot problems and in how we approach what we want to get out of our team experience. The first tech challenge is great because it offers an opportunity for creativity within a fairly level playing field for all teams. Teams draw generally from a relatively specific set of parts or world of parts. You know, everyone has to use roughly the same controllers, everyone programs in similar ways, and we're all playing the same game. So while we're all focusing on similar problems or the same problem, teams choose how to prioritize certain objectives, they choose how they want to work with their teammates to achieve these goals. And so creativity is really important in how you solve problems and in how these teams are tackling them. We're able to come up with solutions, especially without many of the luxuries of design that some larger teams have. We do all our designs on pencil and paper. It's a very collaborative process. Sketch this, draw that. We fill chalkboards with our sketches and designs and then write it down and record it to keep it productive. When I joined the robotics team, I was expecting that I would be doing a lot of task-oriented tasks and just trying to fill a checklist of what a robot can do. But as I worked with the team, we would always have these debates and discussions about what kind of system that we were building would be better than the other. And I think that having other teammates, especially when we're working together, it helps us see something from a different way. We have to improvise all the time. And one time when we were designing the carousel, we realized that the wheels that we planned to put on there were not grippy enough. So I had to have someone's dad get a pink rubber kitchen glove. And we just stretched it over it the day before the competition. And I think I also underestimated the kind of potential that seemingly unusable objects have. And even Miles, he always told me from day one, when in doubt, use gaffer's tape. And I didn't take that seriously at all. Sometimes they work. Yeah, tape is your best friend. It's oh yeah. Never gonna let you down. It's actually even more reliable than screws. Each match is only two minutes and 30 seconds. So the teams really have to make decisions on what tasks they're gonna try and accomplish. And they're trying to maximize the number of points that they can achieve in only two minutes and 30 seconds. You'll notice today's matches contain three stages. It starts with the autonomous mode, and then it goes into the driver controlled period, which ends in a 30 second end game. So notice through each of these three stages how the robots change what they're doing and how the teams are adapting. So these teams that are competing together in a specific match have not really worked together before. So they can talk to each other for a few minutes beforehand, but really they have to work together in the moment to compete as a unit together and try and solve problems that are presented to them on the team. So they will talk about which robot is better at certain tasks than others. After opening ceremony, every team will find out the match schedule. They'll see who their five partner teams are for the five of the next 20 matches they're playing in. They will have some time to coordinate with the teams they're playing with. You have a random partner and two randomly assigned opponents. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you have maybe 15 minutes before to discuss with the team before you play your match, but sometimes it's very short, like a minute or two. And usually you tell each other what things, what parts of the competition you can and can't do. And if there are parts that you could maybe do sometimes, like we can only get the carousel in autonomous mode sometimes. And so if the other team is better at that, then they'll take over doing that. And then we make a game plan of who's going to do what thing and usually it works quite well. We'll work with the team and we work really well with them. If we get to the finals, we'll pick them because we know we work well with them, even if they weren't necessarily like the top team. Once I thought about it for a minute, I thought these robotic competitions are teaching us to work with people and see these problems to be able to solve in a different way. And I think that is so valuable.